So you want to know what it's like to fly when you're plus size or when you're fat. You want to know what that experience is like. So I am here to share my experience with you and tell you some of the tips that I have for flying when you're fat. my channel or welcome if you're new here today's video is going to be all about flying while you are plus size flying while you're fat flying when you're fluffy whatever term you use to describe yourself if you're a bigger person bigger individual then this video is the one for you and we're going to get into all the nitty gritty details about flying when you're fat flying when you're plus size and how you can have your best experience and live your best life First, let me just say this. You deserve to travel. You deserve to live your best life. You are amazing just the way you are. It does not matter what size you are. That should not limit you in this life. And you should be able to live your best life just like everyone else can. My name is Jay Bay. I'm known as Jay Bay Productions on social media or Jay Bay Official. I am a content creator. I create content about beauty, plus size fashion, plus size travel, lifestyle, you name it, and I create content about it. So as a woman who wears a size 6X or a size 30, I fall on the end of the fat spectrum, so I am definitely a large individual. And so since I've flown while being a 4 or 5X, I think that I have a lot of experience I can talk to you about. Both my fiance and I wear a size 6X and we have traveled together, so we kind of know how everything goes when you're traveling as a plus size person. I can't wait to get in this video and I hope that my tips help you. I'm gonna preface this video with saying these are all my own opinions. I am not sponsored by any of the companies I'm going to be talking about today and these are my real honest thoughts honest opinions I absolutely love to travel I did it a lot before I got sick with pulmonary hypertension which is what requires me to wear oxygen like that I used to travel a ton I've traveled with my fiance we are both a size 6x back then we were both about a 4 to 5x so we know what it's like to fly when you are a much much larger individual and when you're flying with another person that's plus size so today we're gonna go ahead and talk about all the tips all the tricks all the details that I can give you so that you are your most comfortable self when you go to get in that plane and you can live your best life and get to your destination a-okay. The first thing we're going to talk about today is choosing your airline. Who are you going to fly with? But before I go into that, I just want to say this. Every single body is a travel body. Everyone on this earth deserves the same opportunity to travel. And while travel is a privilege, it shouldn't be one because of your size. You shouldn't have to limit yourself because of your size or disability or whatever it is. You deserve to travel. You deserve to live your best life just like everyone else on this earth. And that is the most important thing that I'm gonna say today. You deserve to travel. Don't apologize for who you are. Don't apologize for your size. You deserve the same respect you give everyone else. You deserve to travel comfortably and you deserve to feel good while doing it. So that is just the first thing I wanted to say. Get that confidence, honey. Let's get on this plane and feel good. So let's get into the video. Let's talk about choosing an airline. Personally, I have flown on several different airlines and I've noticed different things about each of them. I've flown United Airlines, Delta, Allegiant, Alaska. So I have some good experience. One of the airlines we're gonna talk about today is Southwest. And while I personally have not traveled with them quite yet, they are in the top three choices I'm going to make now when I go traveling because of a certain policy that they have called the customer of size policy. When you're choosing an airline, you want to choose one that's going to be the most accommodating, right? I have heard so many amazing things about Southwest Airlines, so I wanted to do some research into it and figure out if they are the most plus size friendly airline. And the answer I have come up with is yes, I believe they are. I am now really, really interested in Southwest Airlines and I've actually focused on them and done a bunch of research so that I could give you guys the best answer. And for me personally, they are one of the top airlines I wanna choose the next time I want a trip. Like I said, this video is not sponsored, but I've been hearing so many things about Southwest Airlines and their customer size policy. And I am absolutely astounded and super proud of them for making their customer of size policy and being so plus size friendly. To my understanding, this is how the Southwest Airlines customer of size policy goes. If you need multiple seats and you know that, you can do one of two things. You can either purchase multiple seats ahead of time. So instead of just your one, purchase two or three so you know that you're gonna have that space. And then after your trip is concluded, you've already flown and you're back home, you can request a refund for those seats. Or second, when you get to the airport that day, the day of your flight, go up to the gate agent and ask them if there is an empty seat that they can give you or tell them that you think you're gonna need two or three seats. And if there is room available, they will give them to you free of charge. That way you are as comfortable as you possibly can be. If you go up to the gate agent well before your flight's gonna take off and talk to them when they're not super busy, they can usually tell you how full your flight is, if there's extra seats available that maybe aren't taken up that you could be placed in instead so you have enough room and you feel comfortable, whatever the case may be. So make sure if you're really worried about it and especially the day of, just talk to the gate agent. You can even call the airlines, 
talk to them and see what they can do for you. I really hope that in the near future, other airlines will start implementing a policy similar. Let's be honest, there are a lot of people who are plus size and we all deserve to fly comfortably. And even if you're not plus size, you're straight size, you know that airplanes tend to not be the most comfortable seats. Okay, so you figured out which airline you wanna fly with, but now you're thinking seats, where are you gonna sit? What seat or seats are you going to purchase? I'm just going to share my experience with you and tell you what I've experienced, what seats I think are the best and what seats I think are not the ones for plus size people. I also wanna preface this with the last time that I was flying and we were traveling a lot, my fiance and I did have privilege that some others don't get because he worked at the airport and we had something called flight benefits, which meant that we could fly standby, which is a whole different ball game and maybe I'll get into it in further videos, but not today. We had the privilege of not having to pay out of pocket for all of our seats. We only paid a small fee and it was very handy. Obviously it was like the ideal situation at the time. I know that these might not be the most cost friendly, but I'm going to just try and give you my advice on what seats worked for us, what seats didn't. If you can help it, you want to avoid middle seats if you are a plus size person. The middle seat is usually the most uncomfortable. If you're flying with someone you know, sitting in the middle isn't too bad. If you're already gonna be super squished together and you're comfortable with that person, not too bad. But we had an experience where we both both got stuck in the middle seat and they were not adjoining so I was in one middle seat he was in another and it was the worst experience of our life so I'm just saying if you can avoid the middle seat avoid it with your life unless you're flying with people you're comfortable with that you don't mind you know bumping elbows and all that but if you are a bigger person there's already going to be a possibility you might have some spillage in any seat you choose so if you're crammed in the middle you're not going to be comfortable in my opinion and now I'm going to briefly mention something we're going to get into later which is a seatbelt extender so if you have to use a seatbelt extender, you want to avoid the exit row. All right. So what I've noticed with most airlines is if you wear a seatbelt extender or you need one, you are not allowed to sit in an exit row. So you want to try and make sure when you're picking out your seats, avoid the exit row. Another reason you want to avoid the exit row is they are notoriously known for having armrests that will not lift up. So if you are a bigger person, you have big hips like me, and you're sitting in one of those seats, you are going to be uncomfortable in my opinion. Anytime I've gotten a seat with armrests, I have had the worst time. I've had bruising left from it. Um, it's just not the most comfortable. So you might be sitting here wondering, how am I gonna be able to tell before I even am on the plane what the seat is like. What am, how am I gonna be able to tell the dimensions of the seat? How am I gonna be able to tell if it has an armrest that doesn't go, move up and down? How am I gonna be able to tell if the folding table's in the side or if it's in front of me? How am I gonna know if it has extra leg room? All of that. Well, guess what? I found something called Seat Guru that I think is going to change the game for me when I travel. This is something I also just found that I haven't personally used yet. I went through and kind of demoed it and tried to figure out what it's like, and I was amazed. And so was my fiance who worked in an airport for years. Seat Guru is a website you can go to. All you need to know is your flight number, the airline you're flying with. I believe there might be one other piece of information, and that's about it. You type that information in, it will pull up the aircraft that is going to be flown for your flight and it'll show you a map of seats you can choose the seats on there and it will tell you if they have an armrest do they have a tv do they have a power outlet so if you're someone like me who has to travel with oxygen and you have to have a power outlet then you want to make sure you're getting a seat with one or say you have work that you need to do on your laptop or you want to watch a movie on your ipad whatever it is and you need an outlet seat guru can tell you the dimensions of the seat if it has a power outlet if it has a tv screen if it has an armrest that's in front that comes down or if it's in the side armrest thing that comes down it can tell you a bunch about the seat you're choosing another tip i have for picking seats if you're plus size is trying to get seats that are up towards the front that way you have a shorter distance to walk when you're coming in boarding we'll also talk about boarding later Later. So you don't want to pick the very first row in the airplane because those might have armrests that do not move I would recommend choosing a seat that's towards the front or more towards the front if possible Because it'll help you get onto the plane easier. You'll be able to get off the plane easier It'll just make your life a little bit easier There's one step I wanted to mention before we get into the arriving at the airport stage of this video and that is seatbelt extenders So I'm sure if you're watching this you've probably heard of seatbelt extenders or been worried about trying to get a seatbelt extender When you get on your plane, what even is a seatbelt extender? Well, it's kind of self-explanatory, but if you don't know, let me break it down for you. A seatbelt extender is literally this extension that you can get that will clip into your seatbelt on your seat that'll extend it so you have more room. You can tightly secure it to be exactly where you need it to be, but it'll give you more room than the standard seatbelt that the seat comes with. Now, all airlines, I believe, are required to have seatbelt extenders on hand. And I've never personally ran into an issue where I needed a seatbelt extender and one wasn't available, 
but I do know that I've experienced being a little bit embarrassed before. Back when I was newer to traveling and a little less confident than I am now, and I hadn't really reached my body acceptance, self-acceptance journey, I used to get ashamed of having to ask for a seatbelt extender. It would give me anxiety every single time I would have to travel. I knew I was gonna have to ask for one. I knew that I'd either have to ring the bell or have them come and talk to me and everyone would see that I'm getting a seatbelt extender, all of these things. One, let me tell you something. Every flight I've been on, someone else has to get a seatbelt extender too. So you're not gonna be the only one. And even if you're the only one, who cares what they think? You deserve to feel comfortable. You deserve to be flying, rest assured that you're gonna be safe, you're comfortable, you feel good. You deserve to be on that plane just like any other paying customer. So do not let someone make you feel shame for that. But if you do have to ask and you're worried about it, you can go ahead and go to Amazon or click the link down in my description. I'm gonna link some seatbelt extenders down there that are FAA approved. You can go and check out those seatbelt extenders and buy one before you even get there. In my opinion, they're super affordable. They range from like $13 to $30 on Amazon. I've linked some on my Amazon storefront and I'll link some down below. So you can go to that link and just pick one up if you want to. If you don't wanna purchase your own and you don't even know if you're gonna need it, believe me, when you get on that plane, they're gonna have a seatbelt extender available in my opinion. And what you can do if you wanna try and be a little bit more discreet is as soon as you're boarding the plane, ask the flight attendant. You know, there's usually flight attendants they are greeting you. Just ask them, hey, I am in seat, blah, blah, blah. I need a seatbelt extender. Or, hey, I'm going to be in seat, blah, 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 with my family or my boyfriend, my fiance, my girlfriend. And I need, we're going to both need seatbelt extenders. And they will come and bring you one whenever they have free time. I like to say it as soon as I get on the plane. That way it's just off my mind. And they usually bring it to you as soon as they can. If they forget, just ring that little light and ask for it again. They honestly have so much going on that they sometimes do forget, but don't feel like you can't. Don't feel embarrassed if you need it. You deserve to feel comfortable. You need to be safe. You deserve to be safe and you deserve to travel comfortably. And there are not only seatbelt extenders for the plane seats, but there are also seatbelt extenders for your car. So if you're going to have to transfer from the airport to your hotel through a shuttle, through a bus, through an Uber, and you don't think you're gonna sit comfortably in like the back of an Uber or whatever the case may be, you can even pick up a seatbelt extender for your car. I'll try and link some of those down below as well. That way you have it in your purse, backpack, whatever, whatever car you're gonna be in, whatever taxi, you know that you're gonna have a seatbelt extender that fits and you'll be able to get there safely and not be all worried and stressed about. Another thing that I'd recommend bringing if possible is a slip-on pair of shoes or some shoes that are really easy for you to take on and off through security checks because believe me, I'm sure even smaller people don't like having to go through security checks, but it sucks when you have like tennis shoes on and you're sitting there trying to like tie your shoe and get your luggage and do all of that, it's nuts. So I always try and wear like some slip-on shoes, even if you don't wanna wear the shoes the whole day on your plane, wear them until you get through security and then change your shoes in the bathroom or on like a seat or something like that or at your gate, whatever you need to do. I always recommend bringing some slip-on shoes. I think they're a lot easier to deal with and so those are just some essentials I would bring. I would also recommend like if you have medications and you're gonna be going through security, bring a plastic bag that you can shove them all in that way they're visible and security can easily see them if they need to. I always recommend a backpack and a carry-on because that way you have all the essentials you need in like a little bag or a backpack that you can have right at your seat either under or in the front pouch. In my carry-on I like to bring a change of clothes, a change of shoes, just all the essentials I might need, any medication, chargers, headphones. Those are some things that I always bring and I just wanted to throw in that little tidbit but now let's go ahead and get into the next part of the video. So. Let's talk about arriving at the airport. It is usually recommended you get there two hours early and let me tell you if you're plus size, the biggest tip I can give you is time, time, time. Give yourself as much time as you can for these things because if you have enough time, you're gonna feel a lot less stressed, you're gonna feel good, you're gonna feel sure that you're not forgetting things or you're doing everything and making sure that you're gonna have your best experience possible. So give yourself time. Give yourself time to get to the airport, two hours or more if you need it. Make sure you give yourself time to get to your gate. Make sure you give yourself enough time to do anything you need to do, use the bathroom, all of that before you get on the plane. All right, so the next piece of advice I have is for people who have trouble walking long distances and how to make sure you're accommodated so you can get to your gate or get to your flight safely. So if you have trouble walking long distances, you can either call the day before you go to the airport and request that you have wheelchair assistance, which would mean that someone from the airport, their staff would help you and transport you to and from your gates. That way you don't have to walk and get out of breath or maybe you have an oxygen concentrator like me and you're gonna be really uncomfortable if you walk the long distance, whatever it may be. If you need help, if you have a mobility device, whatever it is, make sure that you're accommodated because you deserve to be comfortable. You deserve to get there and not affect your health in some crazy way. So make sure that if you feel you need that help, you can ask. And there doesn't have to be any reason. Technically, they're not even allowed to ask you why. And if you have trouble walking long distances, that is reason enough. 
And even if you don't have trouble walking long distances, but you're worried that walking all back and forth might hinder you or might slow you down or whatever it may be, it's free, it's available to everyone and anyone. There's no need to feel ashamed about it. It is a lot of walking in the airport and I walked before I had pulmonary hypertension, which requires me to wear my oxygen. But I remember it would be so much on my body and it is a lot of walking and it can tire you out. And you don't deserve to be so tired out by the time you get to your destination that you can't enjoy it. So use a wheelchair if you need to, have them transport you or have someone you're with transport you, but ask them for accommodations. You deserve to travel comfortably. So honestly, if you need this service, use it. There are tons of wheelchairs there. There are tons of staff that can help you and you're not gonna have to be embarrassed or ashamed if anyone is being an asshole to you and staring at you or making you feel uncomfortable realize that that's more a reflection of who they are and not you you deserve to travel comfortably live your best life no matter what size you are no matter what abilities or disabilities you have anything in between you deserve to be respected you deserve to be treated well and you deserve to have a good time and a good flight now on to pre-boarding so I always recommend no matter if you're able-bodied you're disabled whatever it is if you are someone in a bigger body or whatever if you feel you're gonna need more time getting on that plane go ahead and pre-board pre-boarding is something available to anybody who needs extra time whether you're a plus size person whether you have a disability whether you're elderly whatever it is pre-boarding is available to anybody who needs that accommodation and it will allow you to get on the plane first getting on the plane first is something I love to do because it helps me feel the most comfortable I have very wide hips and walking down the narrow aisle can be uncomfortable and if people are in their seats I always feel like I'm rubbing my butt on them and I don't want to do that I try to be the one of the first groups to get on the plane so I can get to my seat I can put everything in my overhead bin I can get out the items I need and I get everything ready to go that way I'm in my seat by the time everyone else starts boarding so I'm already comfortable I've gotten my seatbelt extender I'm feeling good I'm comfy I have everything I need and I put in my headphones and vibe out before I had significant disabilities I actually would always try and pre-board it made me feel the most comfortable and me being comfortable helps other people around me be comfortable if you don't pre-board it's totally okay too but if you want that extra time and you need that and you think it'll help you feel more comfortable less stress go ahead and take that accommodation pre-board get feeling good on the plane even if it's just something you do once just so you know how it feels and you you know that you're gonna be okay and you don't you're not gonna run into any bumps or anything like that all right and that brings me to the next thing which is medical device so for me personally I now have a portable oxygen concentrator that I will be bringing along anywhere I go because I have to be on oxygen 24 7 due to my medical condition when you're thinking about a portable oxygen concentrator a wheelchair whatever device mobility device you might have medical devices can be checked in for free you just have to let your gate agent know let the airline know that this is a designated medical device and you will not have to pay to check it in all right so now you're on your way you're getting onto the plane or you're on the plane and you want to know how you're going to feel i know that for me one of the biggest things i was worried about was that people would stare at me or make me feel like an outcast because of my size i can tell you while you might encounter an asshole or two it's not going to be a whole bunch so it's not something that you really need to worry about but i will say this if anybody on that plane makes you feel uncomfortable because of your weight kindly ask the stewardess to take care of it because you do not deserve to be treated that way you do not have to take any abuse because of your size you're a paying customer and you deserve to be on that flight just as much as anyone else does. Now, there's something else I wanna say. Be confident and comfortable while you're on that plane. You deserve the right to travel. You are on that plane. You deserve to be there just like everyone else does and you deserve to feel comfortable and confident. If you need to use the restroom while you're on the plane and you have to scoot by some people, just say excuse me. Don't feel the need to say sorry. This is something I used to do all the time, would say sorry, sorry, sorry. Do not apologize for your body. Your body is yours, it's nobody else's business, and if they have an issue with it, that is their issue. If you are plus size and you don't think you're gonna buy two seats or three seats, and you're worried about people being rude to you because some of you might be in intruding on their space, some people will be really nice about it, but I will warn you, sometimes there will be people who are super rude about it, so just make sure before you even take off, are you gonna be comfortable sitting in that seat? If you feel that that person's making you feel extremely uncomfortable, ask to be moved or asked if there's some other accommodation that can happen or some other situation so you can sit by someone or sit alone with not being sit somewhere where you're not going to be treated like shit and where you're not going to be told you're too big or made to feel uncomfortable this is a tip i really want to give you all because this is something i used to do all the time because of my size i'd get on a plane and i wouldn't want to use the bathroom because i didn't want to have to walk past anyone i didn't want to have to like if i'm sitting in the window seat i didn't want to have to shove past everyone in my seat or anything like that but if you have to get up which you should to get some blood flow in your legs you 
don't want to get a blood clot or anything like that. So if you need to get up, you need to rest him, you need to just stretch, do it. Do not feel confined because of your size. Don't feel like because of your size, you can't get up and use the restroom or you can't get up and take a walk if you need to for a few minutes. Whatever the case may be, you need to worry about you and what's going to be the best for you and make you comfortable and getting a blood clot because you sat too long or having your bladder hurt because you held your pee in too long is not worth it. So if you need to get up, use the bathroom and walk around. If you're not going to buy a seatbelt extender, as soon as you get on that plane, just make sure to ask for one or once you're sitting down, you can ask for one as well. Turn on the little call light. They'll come to you, ask you what you need and they'll provide you with one. And usually they're very discreet about it. Once you're also on the plane, I would say go ahead and put everything up in the overhead bin other than the few items you need that you can put in the seat back pocket or in your pockets. That way you don't have to get up and get stuff in the, the overhead bin if you don't want to. I also recommend if you are someone that knows you're going to have to use the bathroom a lot during this, try and get an aisle seat. The aisle seats have a little more room. They usually have an armrest that will go up. They usually just give you a little bit more space. And if you know you're going to have to get up regularly throughout the flight, then aisle seat will make it so you can just get up and go. You don't have to walk past the person in the middle and it'll just make you feel a lot better. If you're having anxiety and everything and you're on the plane, the thing that helps me the most is just turning on a good playlist or reading a book or doing some work, just chilling out and not focusing on the fact that I'm on a plane, but just focusing on the fact that I'm about to be somewhere fun. I'm almost to my destination. I'm gonna just vibe out and have a good time and relax. That's what I try to do when I'm on the plane. And once you're on the plane, you usually let go of all those worries of, oh, I wasn't gonna fit in the seat. The seatbelt extender is not gonna fit me. I'm not gonna have an seatbelt extender. The person next to me is gonna be rude. All those start to just, go away, they fall away, and you feel better. Another thing I like to do before the plane takes off is check and see if my fold-out shape is actually going to fit, depending on my vibe. If I'm flying economy, I always try and get a whole row for my fiance and I, so that's three seats, and basically I'll sit on the window seat, he'll sit in the aisle, and then we'll use our middle seat to have our tray down to put whatever we need to on there. So I like to just check it out beforehand, but that's just a personal preference. If you are at higher risk for getting blood clots or you are worried about it since you're taking a long flight, Wear compression socks if you can, or bring a pair so you can change into. Try and get up and walk. Don't constrict yourself to just sitting the whole time like I used to do. And yeah, just feel free, feel comfortable. If you've been holding yourself back from flying, I hope this video helps give you the reassurance that you can fly no matter what size you are. And I hope this just helps you, gives you some tips and ideas for what you can do to fly more comfortably. I really hope this video helps you. And if you have any specific questions, I do plan on making another video and hopefully making just a plus size travel series. So if there's certain things you want me to cover plus size travel wise, drop those down in the comments and I will be sure to cover those questions for you and answer them. I hope this video has helped you. These are just some of my thoughts and opinions. Like I said, these are all my own thoughts and opinions. I have flown many times and I have never encountered an experience that just made me never want to travel again. Getting a couple weird looks here and there is something that's possible, but don't let it stop you from living your best life. Don't let it stop you from doing anything. What other people think is truly none of our business. Their opinion is not your reality. You deserve to be comfortable flying and you deserve to live your best life just like everybody else. You deserve the same respect that you give everyone else in their bodies and I hope that you get the same respect back if you do encounter an uncomfortable situation speak up and say something you don't have to be confrontational but don't just take that abuse because you don't have to you don't deserve that you deserve to fly in peace get to your destination and have a good time do not let anything hold you back from traveling the world seeing beautiful things you deserve it just as much as anybody else does if you do decide to shop for a seatbelt extender check to see if it's faa approved so you know the airline will actually allow you to use it hopefully you don't run into any problems if you bring your own extend if you do run into some issues they'll probably just provide you with one like i said and it, they are very discreet about it when they do it so don't be too worried about that don't be embarrassed if you have to use a seatbelt extender plenty of people do it's not a big deal and it shouldn't limit you from wanting to fly i would say the top things to take away from this are if you need two or three seats it's okay southwest airlines has accommodating policies if you speak to a gate agent they will make sure that you are the most comfortable you can be and they will accommodate do not be afraid to speak to the gate agent once you're at your gate Please don't, I've done it plenty of times now. I used to be worried about it, but they can be really helpful. And if there's seats open, they can sometimes just upgrade your seat or give you a better seat or give you enough seats so you're comfortable. And do not be afraid that you're gonna get kicked off a plane or you're gonna be shamed in front of everyone. Like I said, I have never encountered that. I've never seen anybody be shamed or anything like that for being big in person. If so, I would stand up for them. And I hope that someone stands up for you and I hope that you stand up for you. But I have never seen someone get kicked off the plane 
or be shamed while they're in their seat and be told that they have to buy two seats or three seats. I've never personally seen that. I really don't think that's gonna happen to you. So I hope this gives you some peace of mind. But like I said, if it does speak to the flight attendant, they will make sure that that behavior is put to rest right there or that you are moved so you feel comfortable. Another key takeaway is give yourself time. Give yourself time to get to your gate. Give yourself time to get to the airport. Give yourself time checking in. Give yourself time everywhere. Time is going to make you feel the most comfortable you can. It's gonna make you feel the most rest assured. You'll know that everything's happening. You'll have enough time even if there is some hiccup. It'll just really give you some peace of mind. Have questions and you can't find any resources online that are specific to the airline you're flying, just go ahead and give them a call. They can be really helpful. They'll talk to you. It'll help you feel better. They can give you information that you might not be able to find. And you just wanna be as prepared as possible because being prepared will really make sure that your trip goes super smooth and I want you to have a great time. That's what you deserve. Don't ever let anyone limit you to travel because of your size. Don't be worried that you can't fly because you might require two or three seats. You might be able to get refunded. And like I said, Southwest has a policy. Hopefully more airlines will start to implement something similar. So don't let that affect you. Don't let having to get a seatbelt extender either on the plane or buying one affect you either. It's totally normal, it's okay. There are tons of individuals who need it, so don't let that stop you. Give yourself plenty of time, like I said. Use Seat Guru, really figure out what seat you're gonna be sitting in if it really is something stressing you out. Make sure you bring some stuff that'll help you feel good, calm down once you're on the plane so you feel better. Bring a pair of headphones for sure, download a playlist. A lot of planes have TV, some of them have Wi-Fi. There are so many things you can do to distract yourself if you're feeling really anxious on your flight. I hope you guys have absolutely loved this video. I hope it helps you. You deserve to fly if you're plus size, if you're fat, whatever size you are, you deserve to fly. You deserve to live your best life and if travel is what you wanna do, you can go and do it. Don't ever let anyone tell you otherwise. You deserve to fly just like everyone else. I hope to see you traveling the world very, very soon and I'm wishing you all the best. If I can be of any more help, drop those questions down in the comments. I will keep the videos coming about plus size travel and I will make sure you feel safe when you're traveling next. Before you leave, it'd mean the world to me if you gave me a big old like, hit that subscribe button turn on the bell for notifications and just tell me down below what you thought of this video and if you don't already follow me on socials at jbay productions on instagram and at jbay official on tiktok all right y'all i hope you have an amazing trip amazing flight and i hope you have a good day bye guys